Our second novel to be the subject of scrutiny for the Library of the Occult is The Werewolf of Paris, a gothic not novel written in 1933 by American writer Guy Endor. It has been likened by some to be a significant entry into werewolf literature and Endor has managed to do what Bram Stoker did for vampires with Dracula and elevated lycanthropy with a weighty and worthy read. The novel itself is a remarkable study of the Franco-Prussian War serving as a backstory in which the tale is set and the impact that this has on our central characters, laying down the journey in a similar fashion to Victor Hugo's Le Miserable, albeit with strong leanings into the supernatural. The setting is a suitable one as it marks a darkly harrowing time for the French people leading to the revolutions of, 19, of 1848. Endor, who took a strong leftist stance and was known for his devout activism, doesn't hold back on his views on a capitalist regime, hell-bent on wealth and fortune. It also harbours some challenging views on religion, which I found refreshing considering its time but would no doubt thrust a controversial response in some quarters. So as I delved into the novel, I entered with high expectations, but I was struck by how difficult it was at first to connect with the chapter uh, at the beginning and engage with it. For an introduction into the world that Endor is drawing his audience into, I found it too stilted and my initial reaction was that it was going to be a struggle. Thankfully though, the chapter had a little bit more of a draw card, telling the plight and torture of a quarrelling family, the cursed Pitamont clan and the Pitavals. Also, I'll learn a new word, oblete. I'm hoping I pronounced that right, which means a small dungeon that sounds like a horrifying place to be imprisoned in. Now, as the story uh, unfolds, we must beware of priests in wolves' clothing. There's a lot being said here. The second chapter is a difficult read still, but more on subject matter than its literary presentation. No surprises, but religion seems to be, have been the subject of much taboo for centuries. So I found this chapter really interesting in terms of the subject, lust. It makes sense as it's driven by the base animalistic behavior in all of us, but I guess one I never fully connected with lycanthropy. I'd always associate that with more with vampirism. For me, werewolves were admittedly charged with sexual awakening, but it always felt more aggressive than sensual. Once we have been guided through the turmoil of sex and religion and the twisted dreams of metamorphosis, the young boy Bertrand, who is the result of a violent rape, is taken into the home of his step-uncle Amar Galliaz. Bertrand then grows into adulthood, but carries the torment of his wicked ways, attacking a sex worker and killing his best friend. And so he flees the family home, but is pursued by Amar, who feels responsible for Bertrand's welfare. Bertrand seeks solace in the heart of war by joining the National Guard, where he encounters and falls for Sophie de Blumenberg, a wealthy young woman who juxtaposes the hardship that Bertrand has had to endure. And yet, Sophie has masochist, masochist tendencies drawn to humanity's eternal rest. These star-crossed lovers find a unity with Sophie's willingness to let Bertrand cut her and suck her blood. Again, similarities to Dracula are played here. Bertrand's affliction can only be kept at bay for so long, however, and so he ventures forth to feed on someone else for fear that he may kill his beloved. And expected, as expected with werewolf tales, Bertrand's fate is, do is a doomed one, and he ends up captured, and despite Amar's pleas to end the suffering by burning him at the stake, the court seeks to find a cure and send Bertrand to the infirmary. The plight falls further into disarray and Bertrand, in a drug-induced state, commits suicide, a fate that parallels that of his lover, who we learn also ended her own life. This is a sad affair which leaves one sour, but is in keeping with the fate to fall on those inflicted with lycanthropy. The werewolf of Paris ebbs and flows with turmoil and is, a, and is heavily driven by the war-torn France combined with the heartache of youth, struggling to find their place in a destructive and unforgiving world. Both Bertrand and Sophie are lost in the dissolution where the latter is struggling to feel and connect to life's last strands and failing to do so makes the choice to meet her maker. 
Bertrand, in contrast, is forced by a heavy hand and has no option other than to fight the world until there is no fight left in him. For a while, it feels as though love will prevail, but war ultimately wins. The novel, novel draws deep inspiration, but the closest anyone has come to telling the tale on big screen would was with Hammer's films The Curse of the Werewolf, released in 1961 and starred Oliver Reed, but was moved to 19th century Spain instead of France, which seems to be a shame. Legend of the Werewolf, which was directed by Francis, uh, Freddie Francis and credited, uh, sorry, starred Peter Cushing, also has elements from the novel, but Enmore himself was not credited in this feature. Endor would find himself a relative success in Hollywood as a screenwriter, but would never emulate the success of following the werewolf of, pa the werewolf of Paris would produce, with the exception of Babouk, a novel he wrote in 1934 that set, was set in a fictionalised account of a Haitian revolution. His hand at politicising his views in the midst of a turmoil narrative. For me, The Werewolf of Paris is a mixture of entertainment and conflict that either allows you in or pushes you away to the point that you inadvertently feel the effects of metamorphosis through its own reading. That's my views on the uh, novel The Werewolf of Paris by Guy and or which was our second novel look at the Library of the Occult. Do stick around as I try and do these every month and uh, within our four moon sessions and uh, next up I think will be Moonchild by Alastair Crowley. Stay tuned and uh, let us know your thoughts on the novel if you've read it before. I'd be keen to hear them. <laughs>